on Bakersfield.com and the CSUB Roadrunners Digital Network. Downtown Bakersfield, California. Driving Harrington for the win! Yeah! CSUB Roadrunners are your Western Athletic Conference baseball champions. Here's the voice of the runners, Corey Costello. Pretty awesome, huh? Welcome in season number three of Roadrunner Rundown. We are back here live on Bakersfield.com. Here in downtown Bakersfield, thanks so much for joining us for the beginning of the third season of Roadrunner Rundown, at least the uh, the television version. This uh, this show, actually about five years old now. We started in a trailer, and uh, here we are now. A Bakersfield success story started from the trailer. Now we're here. Welcome into season number three. We got a great program for you. I'm Corey Costello. Thanks so much for joining us. A great show to kick off our third season here uh, on Bakersfield.com and, of course, on demand at GoRunners.com. We're going to be speaking with our new athletics director, no longer in term. Uh, Ziggy Siegfried will join us. Coming up in the next segment, we will chat with him about uh, not only him getting the job permanently, but also we will be talking with him about sort of the vision. What's going to be uh, happening? What can fans see different in the next, uh, I don't know, 60, 90 days? Uh, athletic directors are big into figuring out their long-term plans and goals and stuff, so we'll chat with him about that and uh, also talk about the upcoming season as well. We had a good one as an interim AD. Runners winning a couple championships, playing for four WAC titles, winning two, so we'll talk with him about that sort of things. He hopes to expect in the future. Also on the program today, we are going to unveil the 2015-16 CESUB men's basketball schedule. We'll be joined by head coach Rod Barnes coming up at the bottom of the hour as we will uh, unveil who the runners will play both home and away this season and a good schedule for Bakersfield. As a matter of fact, seven teams playing in the postseason after last season, two in the NCAA tournament on the schedule this year. So we'll speak with Coach Barnes coming up in the bottom of the hour. Also, final set segment of the program today. Carlin Pipes will join us. She is a Roadrunner alumni swimmer. She swam through 97-98 uh, for CESUB. A great story, though, because not only is she uh, a CESUB alum, she has a great training facility in Kona, Hawaii called Aquatic Edge. She teaches people really all over the world how to be faster swimmers. She is a multiple world record masters, uh, masters swimmer with plenty, of, uh, plenty of, of records to speak of. And on top of that, she's also an author of her new book called The Do-Over. And a motivational speaker as well. A great story for Carlin Pipes of recovery from addiction to become a college swimmer at CESUB and then to become a uh, successful professional and now a member of the International Swimming Hall of Fame. She was inducted in late June. So we'll speak with Carlin coming up on the uh, final hour of the final segment of the program as well. So a uh, great show. Glad to be back here on the third season of Roadrunner Rundown. Let's get into some highlights. We start with the athletic director. We were speaking with him in a few minutes, but uh, coming up uh, at the end, End of uh, or middle last week, the runners made the announcement as uh, Ziggy Siegfried was uh, was announced as athletic director at CSUB and packed house. 14 month search for a replacement and uh, Dr. Mitchell there getting ready to announce just the third athletic director in history of uh, of CSU Bakersfield. Is, we found the right person. That's the good news. Dr. Wallace and I are very pleased to announce the new CSU Bakersfield athletics director. No longer with the interim tag, our new AD is Kenneth Ziggy Sigler. You know, all I can say is, wow, this is this is amazing. When I came in, I was like, this is this place is packed, and now that I'm up here, it's even more packed. Um, thank you for being here. But the overwhelming support that I've received from the community, from the campus, is, is unbelievable. Um, and it means a lot to me. This city has embraced me since I first came to Bakersfield, since our family first came to Bakersfield. And in addition to that, you know, I believe they, think they see me as a Bakersfield guy. And I know I, I, know I was born in Memphis, <laughs> but I feel like I'm a Bakersfield guy, right. and I love this city. 
we've made a lot of progress, but we are not satisfied. Would you agree with me? We're not satisfied. We're, we're, we can and we will reach much higher success rates. To reach once unimaginable results, that's what we're going to do here. So Ziggy Siegfried announced as athletic director last week. He'll join us in the next segment to share a little bit about his vision and the program and uh, several big things to come for CSUB Athletics. On to sports. Yes, we are there. The season has started. Women's soccer will start with CSUB at home. Opening the season Friday night at hosting Humboldt State is Gary Kernin looking for his 100th win as an NCAA head coach as well. Runners dominating early on. Lots of chances for Bakersfield as the runners will get one, though, as a nice cross from Elias says, finding red shirt freshman Amina Settles, who nets her first career goal. one nothing. CESUB just like that. 20th minute, Maya Green getting the chance and putting it away for the Roadrunners as she gets the touch from Settles and Alex Arante. 2 nothing. CESUB at the half. Second half, much of the same. The Roadrunners keeping it in the offensive end as Bakersfield showing showcasing some of their new weapons as here's, uh, here's Haley Vincent. Nice shot here that is saved. CESUB out shoots humbled on the night 18 to 3 second half pressure like this continuing to keep the jacks on their heels good set piece uh, action coming up for the roadrunners as well as bakersfield from the corner and this one's going to find vincent but this is going to sail high so we're still two nothing 58th minute probably the shot of the night jess moorhead laser off the direct kick but it hits the crossbar still a two nothing game runners really showcasing different weapons in this game keep control of the ball 30 uh, 41st minute off one miss then the roadrunners regroup and it's going to be Tori Vanderhoff taking an advantage of an errant kick and putting it away. 3-0, her first collegiate goal as well. Time winding down. Nice hustle play by Max Langenberg to set up Chloe Peepgrass, who scores in the 87th minute. A lot of celebration for the runners, and why not? A lot of firsts in this game. Crowd, well, they were pretty happy as well. CES should be dominating this one, and uh, four goals. Meanwhile, been a while since they've done that. The crowd on hand, very happy to see the runners do this. As Hunter wins as head coach, here is head coach Gary Kernin. A lot of new, new, new players are still trying to get used to the system, but they did really well. They worked hard, and the biggest thing for us was they took their chances. So when we score goals, we're going to be in a, in a much better position than, than keeping teams around. And, you know, hopefully everyone saw tonight of what we've got potential ways. You know, there's exciting talent there. There's good guys here who are putting their bodies on the line for this program. But it's not going to really get us all. You know, we're going to take our kicks, and, and it's it's a long season. So this is a nice start, but. Uh, we're not under any illusions that it's all uh, you know, rainbows and fairy tales. It's, it's going to be hard, but, but that's what we're, we're gearing ourselves up for. So the Roadrunners winning their season opener 4 nothing over Humboldt State. Amina Settles, Maya Green, Tori Vandehop, and uh, Chloe Peepgrass all scoring for CESUB in that one. So a lot of uh, young uh, underclassmen all scoring in this one, as a matter of fact, in the win. Upcoming for the Roadrunners, they're going to go on the road. This is where it starts to get tough, as Coach Kerning was suggesting. They're going to go to Eastern Washington Friday at 4 o'clock, and then they will head to Gonzaga. So a Eastern Washington portion for Bakersfield will be in Spokane on Sunday at 1 p.m., as well. So Friday at 4 in Cheney, Washington, Sunday at 1 in Spokane. CSB back at home on September the 4th. They will host Sacramento State at 4 o'clock or make that 7 o'clock at the uh, main soccer field. And then Sunday, September 6th, back at home against UC Riverside. Both those games at 7 p.m. On to CSB men's soccer. A couple exhibitions last week. So last Monday, the runners falling 2 nothing to number 8 ranked Stanford. Matter of fact, a scoreless match for the 78th minute. The Cardinal picks up a couple late goals to hold off off the Roadrunners, but a good showing in that one. Then Bakersfield, a couple nights later, will play to a uh, nil-nil draw against Vanguard University as well. So the runners uh, Thursday night uh, playing to that scoreless draw. And then they capped off the weekend. The runners getting a 4-2 victory over the alumni team on Saturday. Special note, so I made a uh, attempted coaching debut for the alumni team. That will be a part of uh, next week's Roadrunner Rundown, uh, our special fall sports preview edition. So there's a special Corey versus Seth segment where uh, I'm basically making my debut as a soccer coach so don't miss that next week right here on the program you will be uh, you'll be entertained and uh, I think I'm a pretty decent soccer coach at least I dressed the part here's what's coming up for the uh, men's soccer team they're going to be at Denver this Saturday night 7 o'clock mountain time that game will be live on Altitude Sports so if you have Dish Network or Direct TV and you get Altitude you can check that out the Roadrunner is going to be live on Altitude this Saturday night against Denver good program Denver winning the Summit League the last couple years be a tough 
early season test for CSUB. So the Roadrunners on the road to start their season. They're not back until September 11th here in Bakersfield. On to CSUB volleyball. They're going to be on the road. Speaking of which, they just they love doing it. They like play on their on the road early in the season, and that's actually the case. They're going to play Denver as well as part of the uh, San Francisco tournament, the University of San Francisco tournament. Runners will be uh, taking on Denver Friday night at six o'clock at USF. Then they will play a doubleheader on Saturday, taking on the uh, host Dons Saturday at twelve thirty in San Francisco, and then they will cap that off with a uh, match on Saturday evening four thirty against San Diego State at the USF tournament. Then the runners are going to stay in. The the greater Bay Area because the following Tuesday they will be taking on us at Sacramento State at 7 p.m. as well. So a lot of action coming for the Roadrunners and you can hear more about these teams and preview each one of these teams, men's soccer, women's soccer and volleyball. We'll tell you all about them next week on our special fall sports preview edition of Roadrunner Rundown. We've got to step away and take a break. When we come back, Ziggy Siegfried will join us. We'll chat with him about uh, well, now officially being Athletics Director. We'll chat with him next Also still to come, Rod Barnes as we unveil the 2015-16 men's basketball schedule as well. Stick around. Season number three of Roadrunner Rundown continues. College soccer heats up with three games coming to the CSUB main soccer field. First, CSUB women's soccer hosts Sacramento State on September 4th and UC Riverside on Sunday, September 6th. Men's soccer returns to action for their official home opener on Friday, September 11th as the runners host Loyola Marymount at 7.30. Tickets are $9 for adults and $6 for kids. Join the runners this season at the main soccer field. Go runners! Bakersfield! Yeah! Introducing a new way to get the news. The Bakersfield Californian E-Edition. It's not a website, it's the actual Bakersfield Californian right on your laptop, tablet computer, even your smartphone. All the news, features, pictures, and ads you're used to right at your fingertips. Now you can get the Californian on your schedule, anytime, anywhere, anyplace. Get your new Bakersfield Californian E-Edition today. Visit eedition.bakersfield.com. This is First Look with Scott Cox on News Talk 1180 and the new 96.1 KERN. This is First Look with Scott Cox on News Talk 1180 and the new 96.1 KERN. Introducing a new way to get the news. The Bakersfield Californian E-Edition. It's not a website, it's the actual Bakersfield Californian right on your tablet computer, laptop, even your smartphone. All the news, features, pictures, and ads you're used to right at your fingertips. Now you can get the Californian on your schedule, anytime, anywhere, anyplace. Get your new Bakersfield Californian E-Edition today. Visit eedition.bakersfield.com. The Bakersfield Californian is a great read on the iPad. But did you know that the Bakersfield Californian is available on your Kindle Fire? Or how about Google's Nexus 7? The Nook? You bet. You can also read a full replica of the newspaper on your Android-powered smartphone, on Apple's iPhone, or on your laptop. We have a solution for any device. E-Edition is free for subscribers, or just $7.99 a month. The Bakersfield Californian. We're everywhere and anytime. Subscribe today. Bakersfield.com. Roadrunners basketball 2015-16 season tickets are on sale now. Don't miss your chance to see top-notch NCAA basketball right here on the Blue Court in Bakersfield. Men's basketball season tickets start as low as $112 for 16 games, or you can buy combination season tickets for every men's and women's home game this season. For all the new season ticket options for this season, visit GoRunners.com and find the ticket that's right for you. CSUB basketball season tickets available now. To order or for more information, call 654-BLUE. We are back on Roadrunner Rundown, and uh, if you saw the season ticket spot for men's and women's basketball, women's schedule was out. Matter of fact, it was out yesterday. You can check it out online at GoRunners.com. 
Men's basketball schedule coming up uh, in the next segment. Rod Barnes is going to join us. We will go through the 2015-16 men's basketball schedule. And uh, tickets are available. 654-BLUE is an easy way to uh, call up the ticket office, talk to Parker, talk to Logan, and uh, get yourself some uh, season tickets. Or put the deposit down for your 2015-16 season tickets. All right, welcome to the program now. He is uh, officially into the uh, into the role now. He can officially uh, breathe a little bit. And welcome to the show, our athletics director, Ziggy Siegfried. Good to see you. How are you doing? Yeah, doing great, Corey. I'm, uh, I'm on day, I guess, about two or yeah. three. Now, officially, so I want you to look at the screen. Okay, this is what it looked like last year, for the most part, where it said interim athletics director. Nice. And so, there you go. I like Official it. Official transition. <clears throat> that is like your christening. Like when they, when, they, when they knight people, you've just been knighted. Hey, now, now I know it's real. <laughs> now it's real. Your <laughs> lower third on the program says athletic director, so you know it's real. Uh, congratulations, by the way. I know it was a, a like 14 month, 14 month process. So um, that had to. I guess at times it was probably. I mean, what was that like? I guess you know from really that whole journey, the process from going, you know, from you originally just sort of wanting to be intern to actually wanting this job and feeling like you could do it. You know, it, it was amazing because at first my goal was I'm gonna make sure the department moves forward and whoever they decide to hire because I didn't apply, yeah. I'm going to support that person. And I was very clear on that. And when they made the decision not to hire someone, um, yeah, in the back of my mind, I was like, you know what, this, uh, th- this <laughs> might, there, there might be a chance. And yeah. at that point, I would built up a lot of confidence, uh, the right experiences where my gut was, I, I know I can do this. Yeah. Um, so the experience was great. I, it's, it was the best year of my professional career. Um, and in all honesty, it's because of the staff and, and how the staff and coaches embrace me. Um, not only that, it, it wasn't me. I mean, y'all y'all made me look good. Um, so, and, and that's and that's the truth, and you know it. And it's it's one of those things where we were just rolling forward, and it was a lot more than just me. Yeah, and and I actually, I mean, I think I after the first round, and they decided not to hire anybody. I mean, I think I I think I told you like just don't burn the joint down and you have a shot at this thing and I think I and I hit all the matches for the last 12 months so. and I appreciate it because yeah. it, it, you know there's a couple of times where I had to <laughs> dump some water on some stuff but it, it worked out was there a moment of clarity when you just realized maybe there was one two moments or one or two days and you're like yeah I can do this I, I should I need to apply I can do this yeah there was and, and really where it hit me is when we went through some adverse situations, you know, what, where, when a sport, when a team maybe got off to a tough start, yeah. but we stayed calm, we stayed focused, and I saw that the energy was still there. In the back of my mind, I was like, you know, this this works. Yeah. Um, and when people might got, might have gotten beat down midway through the season if they were losing, we kept that energy up. And, and that's when it really started to hit me is when we hit some adversity. Yeah. And then we kept on overcoming that adversity. Well, every one of the teams that either played for a WAC championship or played in and won a WAC championship had a bad stretch. I mean, baseball had a couple bad stretches, losing a few series they shouldn't. Uh, had some adversity in the conference tournament, came back, won three games in a row, won it. Volleyball had some issues. They were a three seed going into the tournament. They won it. So obviously, you know, men's soccer had a few issues where they lost uh, several weekend games. Uh, and they came back, won the t- got to the tournament championship, and softball the same. So I guess there was uh, to see that sort of play out must have been nice. It was, and, and think about it. We set our goals for two WAC championships, yeah. and you know we're both in uh, Arizona, and uh, the baseball team is has to win two games. They're down. What was it like four two? Four two in yeah. the eighth inning, mm-hmm. and uh, they came back. Second game we were down. We came back. I just remember. When we won that game, leaning over, giving my wife a kiss, and, and running down there and taking some pictures. So it, that that was a great time. Yeah, for sure. And uh, so everybody wants to know, really, now what can we expect? I know you kind of have your vision. I know, tan- but tangibly, you know, what can pe- people sort of expect to see in the next 60, 90 days? I know that's a big buzzword. So what can folks kind of start to see? Yeah, well, I don't have the luxury that a new, new AD would have because yeah. they come in and say, you know, Corey, the next 60 to 90 sure. days – I'm just going to listen and get right. to know people. Whole year I'm going to watch and see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have that luxury. Yeah. So short term, uh, 30, 60, 90 days, we have to keep on plugging away. You know, we set our 24 goals that we want to accomplish for this summer. Yeah. We'll do the same thing in the fall. We're uh, starting our uh, executive staff retreat um, that you'll obviously be a big part of uh, over the next few weeks. And we're going to create the long-term strategies. But the bottom line is we have to stay focused and we have to know what our end goal is. And that, you know, I know I keep on copying myself, but academic excellence, Mm -hmm. 
student athlete well-being, competitive success, and maintaining that culture. I want people to see that I was who I am, who I was in the interim role. Yeah, is who I'm going to be in the permanent role. Um, so I think that's important. I, I, I want the culture to maintain uh, in our department. I, had, I, I ran into one of our, uh, our police folks on campus this morning at Starbucks, and they said, he said, hey, you got a new boss, huh? And I go, yeah, now I have to listen to him. Before he was like a stepdad. He was like, you're not my father. But now, you know, now we have to listen to him. I know. <laughs> I know and that's, uh, and finally. Finally. It took, it took 14 <laughs> months, and now people are actually starting to listen. No, I mean, and you were right. I mean, the staff was on board from day one, and I think it just made everything easier. And we just like just kept going. I mean, it was it just made it easy because we just kept going business as normal. Yeah. I mean, we weren't there. I don't. Just one of those weird things that we just kept. You know, we knew what you wanted to do. We just kept. We just kept on rolling. So, yeah, and everybody, absolutely. every department, it, it was awesome. Uh, facilities a big one. I know you're working on a master plan. Uh, you and Karen Langston have been doing a lot of work in that. Uh, once that's kind of done, how do you turn a plan into you know dollars and buildings and seeing some results into that? Yeah, there's a couple things. First of all, the priority has to be on our student athletes. So that's why we've put a focus on academics, which we got the eight hundred seventy thousand right. dollar grant. We've put the focus on uh, locker rooms. Um, strength and conditioning, sports medicine, and we're going to have a large inventory of fixing baseball right. and stuff like that. But to answer your question, once you get the plan in place, once you get some of the renderings and you can show the vision, you go and meet with individual in, individuals. And you're, and you're a great example because you're already a Roadrunner Scholarship Fund donor and you've donated to the Baseball Seating Project. Well, we have to be very clear because we have to maintain and increase our Roadrunner Scholarship Fund donations. So when I come, and I'll probably do it on air, ask you to contribute to a facility project, what we have to do is say, Corey, we want, we'd like to ask you to continue your Roadrunner Scholarship Fund donation and consider making a stretch gift, is what I like to call it, over and beyond that for one of our facility projects. Gotcha. Um, and, and typically what you do in this situation is, is it's, a, it's a silent phase until you get about 60% of the money raised for these facility projects. And then once you know the end of the end of the tunnel is coming, then you launch it. So yeah. sorry to put you on the spot about making an ask, no, but that's an example. I appreciate you actually reminding me because I just got to make a note. Pay off baseball seat. There you go. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I think, I'm, I think they're, uh, y- y'all going to start collecting on me here pretty soon. Um, but uh, so, so and, th- and that's all great. And, uh, and I think that's a good plan. Obviously, facilities are a big part. Um, kind of what, what sort of makes this job, I, I, I want to use the word different, but this is a different place. I mean, and I, and I don't mean that bad. I mean, I mean, it's a different place. You, you talked about being big into department culture. And everybody that we sort of hire moving, you know, for the last 14 months moving forward has kind of had to fit into our our little band of misfits, essentially, right? I mean, yeah, e- e- <laughs> and I mean know. that in the most loving way. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're we're a good uh, we're we're good misfits. Yeah, you know, I've talked a lot about the community and the 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 strength and the power of our community is what's really going to transform this place. Yeah. But then you talk about staff. I mean, last night and and Corey, I know you work a lot of long hours. I left at 8:45, and there was still the majority of that staff in our office. Parker, Logan, sure. JD, the whole men's basketball staff. They're still there. For me to leave at 8:45 and not be the last person to leave, yeah, it is amazing. And that's throughout. It shows you that we, our staff, understands their purpose. They're right. not doing it because of job security. They're doing it because they have a purpose, and they're driving forward to make a difference. And they can see it's coming. Yeah, for sure. And uh, let's predict. A co- I've got a couple minutes, but I want to predict a few things, shall we? I like doing this at the beginning of the season to predict who will be very competitive. Um, two WAC titles during the interim year, four championship appearances. How many do you want this season? And what teams do you really think have a, have a good shot? Ooh. Everybody has a shot. But I have my list. I'll give my list first if you want. Yeah, Corey, okay. I'd like to, I'd like I'll to hear put, your list yeah, first. Yeah, I'll put my list first because I, I, <laughs> I mean, here, I think uh, I think seeing I think men's soccer's got a legitimate chance, mm-hmm. a lot of talent there. I think men's and women's basketball both have a lot of talent that people don't recognize yet that I think is going to help us. And I think baseball's got a great shot at repeating. Yeah. Those are those are my top solid four. Not to say that women's soccer looked phenomenal the other night. They are going to be hosting the tournament, so they've got a great shot. Uh, volleyball looked great in their blue gold scrimmage. They've got a chance to repeat. Yeah. But those are just my top four. I would say looking 
just on paper, simply on paper. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, softball is going to have a shot. Um, wrestling is going to have a shot. Yeah, to that put, was that was on my non whack list, but they're going to make some noise in the Pac-12. They're going to send some guys to New York sure. this year. For sure. Uh, so I think that's in in. There's a lot of other individual performances. I look forward to some of the swimming and diving, some of the new individuals that have come on board that Coach Hanson has recruited. Yeah. So I think we're going to have a wide variety of successes, but I agree with, with, with what you mentioned on those. But here soon I'll have a, a full-out uh, <laughs> goal that we will set uh, after yeah. our meeting next week. Yeah, and I had, like I said, I had wrestling on my non whack list. That's going to be a good, I think that's going to be a team that really has a shot in the Pac 12 this year. They're going to surprise some people. It's an experienced group. Uh, guys, like you said, individually will go on to championships, but I think that team's going to get a chance to score quite well in, in the oh, Pac 12 yeah. rundown. That'll be, yeah, that'll be pretty solid. Um, so, you know, really, I know you did a lot of this during your press conference, but there was a lot of folks that sort of helped you get to this point. I mean, who, who are those folks that really sort of help you? Get to this point in your career where you're an athletics director at a Division One institution. You know, it all started with uh, Bill Lanston, who's uh, one of my uh, mentors at Memphis. He brought me in as an intern, uh, worked my way up to senior staff. Um, you know, from there, you know, I look at someone like uh, Jeff Cunha, who helped me a lot to learn, you know, a lot of things over and beyond fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Wallace, I mean, I, everything I said, I meant that Dr. Wallace – has really ingrained and, and confirmed what I already sure. thought of here's what we have to focus on, and it works. Yeah. We have to focus on the right things. Um, and I know I'm always leaving people out, but I'll end with, again, uh, coaches and staff at CSUB, you all could have easily said, man, who is this guy running the department? <laughs> and, and I wouldn't be sitting here today. Right. You didn't do that. You embraced me. And then, obviously, my family. Uh, I mean, my wife, Karen, I'm not going to get emotional yeah, today like the press conference. I'll start tearing up again. <laughs> <laughs> but she was, uh, she was instrumental in yeah. all of this. So I could – you know, I went 20 minutes on my press conference. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, – I, I said 10 minutes tops uh, the night before, and, and Ziggy said, oh, come on, man, I'm not going to go – 10 minutes will be the most. <laughs> and as soon as the press conference, the first thing he said was, I went over 10 minutes, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit. It was passionate, but it was good though. It was good. it wasn't just a waste of time. It was it was Thank good. You. It was a good ten minutes. So I loved it. All right. Well, uh, good luck. I know you got a lot of things. We'll have to do this kind of more often, uh, maybe once a month or so on the show, just to kind of give folks an update and kind of track the progress and uh, the goals and all that good stuff. And uh, looking forward to a solid season. Yeah. Thanks, Corey. Love Roadrunner Rundown coming yeah. back again. Glad glad to be back. Like I said earlier, from the trailer. To this, right here. You know, that's where we started. All right, when we come back, we will uh, speak with head coach Rod Barnes, CHB men's basketball. We're going to unveil the 2015-16 schedule right here on the program. We're back. This is Roadrunner Rundown. We're all runners. We're all runners. We're all runners. Join us for the beautiful game in a beautiful place. CSUB men's soccer season tickets are on sale now. Support us this season by buying your tickets to CSUB men's soccer. Let's go, Riders! CSUB soccer on in 2015. Purchase your tickets today. Go, Riders! Thank you, Phil! Yeah! Let's go, Riders! Introducing a new way to get the news. The Bakersfield Californian E-Edition. It's not a website, it's the actual Bakersfield Californian right on your laptop, tablet computer, even your smartphone. All the news, features, pictures, and ads you're used to right at your fingertips. Now you can get the Californian on your schedule, anytime, anywhere, anyplace. Get your new Bakersfield Californian E-Edition today. Visit eedition.bakersfield.com. Introducing a new way to get the news. The Bakersfield Californian E-Edition. It's not a website, it's the actual Bakersfield Californian right on your tablet computer, laptop, even your smartphone. All the news, features, pictures, and ads you're used to right at your fingertips. Now you can get the Californian on your schedule, anytime, anywhere, anyplace. Get your new Bakersfield Californian E-Edition today. Visit eedition.bakersfield.com. Thursdays at 10 a.m. on Bakersfield.com, you'll find your favorite pair on the air. Don Clark and Tina Miller host Open Up, 
a show devoted to getting inside the real stories about real people. From community leaders to small businesses, Open Up is your forum to tell it like it is. It's Open Up with Don and Tina. The Bakersfield Californian is a great read on the iPad. But did you know that the Bakersfield Californian is available on your Kindle Fire? Or how about Google's Nexus 7? The Nook? You bet. You can also read a full replica of the newspaper on your Android-powered smartphone, on Apple's iPhone, or on your laptop. We have a solution for any device. E-Edition is free for subscribers, or just $7.99 a month. The Bakersfield Californian. We're everywhere and anytime. Subscribe today. Bakersfield.com. And welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown. As we continue on the program, still to come in the next segment, we'll speak with uh, Carlin Pipe, CSUB alum swimmer, who's also an author of a new book called The Do-Over, which is coming out shortly, and as well a uh, motivational speaker. She travels the world. She teaches people how to swim faster, has a great uh, story of recovery, and really a big part of it was CSUB, her time as a swimmer here in 1997-98. So we'll chat with her coming up in the uh, final segment of the program, first one of season number three. Next week on the show, by the way, our fall sports preview edition featuring previews of men's women's soccer and volleyball as well as my coaching debut for the alumni men's soccer squad and uh, you'll see how that went uh, if you knew the score you knew how it went but you'll see how it goes next week on the program but uh, scheduled time we are in that time of year where we get ready for all of our sports to get rolling men's basketball no different couple months out and uh, today on the program we're going to unveil the 15-16 schedule head coach Rod Barnes joining us on the show coach welcome in how you been I'm doing great uh, looking forward to ready to get started again and uh, got the summer past us and <laughs> looking forward to getting our guys back in a couple of weeks and get started. How the uh, how the summer go? I mean, I know you guys were very busy recruiting, uh, got some commitments, uh, happy with the kind of production you guys put in this summer? Oh, I am. I, am. I mean, we had most of our guys here on campus and uh, some of them are still here. So that's that's really exciting to see their growth and Actually, we got a chance to work with them a little bit, and you know, um, I got a big smile on my face because I think we kind of hit the guys we needed to hit, and had a really good chemistry this summer, and just thought we made a lot of progress in which we needed to do. And um, I think, you know, on the recruiting trail, uh, I think we've kind of got ourselves, you know, some footing now. I mean, we've second year being in a whack, which helps us uh, having a staff that's been together for a couple of years. So. I think things are moving forward now. You know, and that was kind of uh, uh, my next question, but you guys had a, a really good camp season. Uh, great. You had a jam-packed team camp. I mean, that right. place was, was packed in the Icardo Center. Uh, great elite camp. Are you and the staff kind of at the point now where you feel comfortable with the recruiting landscape of this community as well as West Coast where you're getting kind of a response now? Well, one of the things, and, and, and we said this, and in, in building a program, you want to make sure that, you know, uh, as you build the program that people see, uh, you know, what you're trying to do in your program. I didn't want to come in from the very beginning and start doing an elite camp and yeah. start doing team camps and doing all of these things. And then people leave here with, man, I, that was bad. <laughs> or they didn't have it together. And uh, we've started now, our, as you said, first of all, our individual camp had numbers like we've never had them before. But I think that because of relationships here in the community, now we're kind of embedded into the community. Yeah. And then our team camp, we had teams come from, uh, you know, uh, maybe Utah, definitely Colorado, right. different places. And we've got other teams that are already starting to call about next year. And then our elite camp, this was the first year for uh, We had the best players here in Bakersfield and, and in Southern California and had kids from Texas and Utah and Arizona. So it was a great success uh, for us. And I think it's something to build on. But we wanted to get the foundation laid. Uh, you know, our court looked great. Uh, our support from our staff people are 
uh, solid in what they do for us. So it just ended up turning out to be a great summer for us. You're starting to get some kids, too, that come into these team camps or these elite camps. But And, and do they kind of leave with the impression of – or they come in even with the impression of, I, you know, I want to play here. This is, you know, this is this this is CSUB. This is the blue court. I want to play here. Do you kind of get that from a lot of kids now? Well, we do. I mean, that's a matter of fact. We, You know, this was the first summer that we had our elite camp. We got a commitment right after camp. Uh, we've got two or three other kids that like to commit, but we're not sure if – you know, we're, we're kind of changing from recruiting to selecting. Yeah. And not that you don't go out and recruit kids, but now we're more familiar with them. And like you said, they come here. And what was most impressive things is most of the AU teams around Southern California and the Valley had their best underclassmen here. And the people were so surprised. I mean, <laughs> I, a lot of people, and what we've got to do a better job as is, is selling our community, but we've got to get people here yeah. to see what we have. I mean, there was parents talking about, I didn't know you guys had a campus. Uh, you know, they <laughs> came here and, you know, the kids was like, man, I, I could see myself being here. And that's all about relationships, but that also getting them here to sell uh, our university and, you know, Bakersfield is growing so much. So I, some of the older parents were saying, well, when I used to pass by here. It was just a couple of, you know, uh, service stations, yeah. and we pull over and keep going. And I'm like, well, it's not like that anymore. <laughs> and you know, even some of the former students that had kids, student athletes that brought their kids back, they, you know, that's one thing they said. It was like when we got here, the the school was the end of Bakersfield. Yeah. And now it's stretching. Almost seemed like we're going to the other side of the five now. For sure, and that's originally when they built the campus. Uh, right. It was going to be on the east side, but they said, no, no, wait, we think the city's going to grow that way. Right. And, and they thought they were crazy for putting campus where it's at. Now we're almost in the middle of downtown, it right. seems like. It's, exactly. It, it's nuts. So, all right, let's talk schedule, and uh, we're going to unveil it here on the program. Here's a copy for you to follow Great. along. Great. But we have uh, copies for the folks to follow along on screen as well. Let's start with the month of November. That's when the action really gets rolling, and uh, we start with the November 7th exhibition against Bristol in the Icaro Center, kind of a tune-up. And then this is a schedule. This includes seven postseason teams last year, two that were in the NCAA tournament, and we see one of them right away uh, at Wyoming. But you get to start the season four games at home, Bristol the Exhibition, San Diego Christian, former WACFO Idaho, and Fresno Pacific. So really, uh, especially getting for that tough stretch you have coming up, how important are those first you know, three, four games for your team? Well, they, they are. And one of the reasons, you know, as, as you know, we have several new players, and, and they're going to have to be an integral part of our team and contribute right away. So we thought if we get home and find ourselves in a comfortable situation, it's leaning toward the end of finals that we don't put too much stress on those yeah. guys. And also we get a chance to play. And then, you know, the game on November 20th was a scheduling thing just because we have an educational day. Yeah. So wanted to give our kids an opportunity here, uh, you know, in Bakersfield, our young students, the opportunity to be on campus. So, and then it kind of really starts the rough part of the season. <laughs> and, you know, we, we go on the road to St. Mary's, their tradition in, in Wyoming and Idaho kind of speaks for yeah. itself. But we'll get through that and – and we'll head off into December. Yeah, Wyoming in the NCAA tournament last year uh, out of the Mountain West and uh, St. Mary's, an NIT team out of the uh, WCC. So that uh, very tough month to end the uh, month of December as well. And again, Fresno Pacific on the 20th, a noon tip-off on a Friday. That's going to be an education day field trip for the kids in the area. Then the month of December, which we always love, which means a lot of time on the road. But this year, a lot of home match home games kind of sprinkled in there as well. But we'll go to Idaho on the 2nd, returning the game in, uh, in Moscow. Also, uh, uh, Northern Arizona at home, uh, returning a trip to South Dakota as well on December 12th. Uh, Dartmouth here at home on uh, December the 14th. Returning that trip, that uh, Valley rivalry back in mm -hmm. effect with Fresno State will be at their place on December 16th. Uh, home against Menlo and Portland State back-to-back -back games the 19th and the 22nd. And uh, and then another uh, couple tough ones there. Arizona State on Monday night, December the 28th. And Morgan State, which is going to be a 1 o'clock start on New Year's Eve. So fans can see another afternoon basketball game I want to bring up the Arizona State game now did you realize coach I don't know if you did this on purpose but <laughs> December 28th is one year to the day that we beat Cal we beat Cal December 28th 2014 now we've got uh, this game against Arizona State, December 28, 2015, Pac-12 school. Was there any connection there, or is this just totally a uh, random? There was, there was no connect, <laughs> connection there, but we'll take the connection and we'll use it. It's a good day. It. It's a good it's day a good for day. us. It's a good day. So hopefully uh, – and, and you, you talked about December. I thought last year we were on the road so much that it wore our team out. Yeah. And when we got to – 
late December, we were pretty much worn sure. out and uh, kind of got us, you know, we kind of started playing well. But this year I wanted to kind of sprinkle some games in, play home, go on the road, play teams, come back home. So once we get to January, we'll be ready for conference play. Uh, Northern Arizona, another postseason team last year. CIT finalists, as a matter of fact, uh, in, in last year's squad. So that's a good team. And uh, also, again, Arizona State, uh, December 28th in Tempe. So one year to the day of uh, the runners' first ever Pac-12 victory. So we'll see how that plays out. On to the month of January. Non-conference ends with the January 2nd meeting at UC Riverside. Good to see some of the Big West teams on the schedule once again. And then uh, conference play opens up the first three on on the road, the first kind of a the WAC wanted is really, really important. They wanted to start on Saturday this year, so we will go to Kansas City to start on a Saturday night, uh, January 9th in uh, in Kansas City, and then the following Monday night we'll be at Chicago State, and then uh, the following week we only have one conference game that'll be at Seattle U. So the first home conference game, January 21st against UTRGV. People are like, "Who's that?" That is formerly Texas Pan American, now Texas Rio Grande Valley. So they will, uh, they will be uh, coming in on the 21st, defending WAC champions New Mexico State on the 23rd, and then at Grand Canyon in Utah Valley. Uh, talk about the conference makeup here. Uh, uh, first three on the road, but obviously a, a chance it's going to pay off at the end of the schedule. Is that kind of the plan? Well, uh, you know, uh, when you first always, uh, when you go into conference play, you know, you like to get off to a good start, but it gives us some opportunities. Yeah. I mean, we play against uh, Kansas City first, and that's a team that we split with last year. And, and we go on to Chicago State. And I, I think it's an opportunity for us that if we can get off to a good start, we want a strong finish. I think this season, uh, as far as the schedule, is set up for us late to be making a run. Yeah. And, and I feel really good about that, that we can get some of the you know, kinks figured out there early. But later on during the year when our students are here and we kind of going down the race, I think the schedule kind of comes back to us, and that's pretty good. All right, we'll go to the next one. A couple here quick. we got to hit a break. But uh, February, uh, again, back at home. Kansas, matter of fact, three in a row, February 4th through the 13th, Kansas City, Chicago State, Utah Valley, uh, at New Mexico State, at Rio Grande Valley, and then uh, home to Grand Canyon on Saturday the 27th. And the cool part is the last two weeks before the conference tournament, for the first time in three years, we're not traveling. We'll be home on the 27th and into the month of March, home for that last uh, Saturday night date against Seattle U. And then the uh, basketball tournament once again, Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, March 10th through the 12th. So, uh, Coach, a good-looking uh, good looking, good looking crop of games, and I know you guys are getting ready. And so uh, we'll be uh, definitely talking to you as we get closer to the, the start of the season. But I'm glad the schedule is out there, ready to roll. Well, we're ready to roll. Uh, you've been on me for the last <laughs> four years, I know. Get the schedule out, Coach, yeah, will you please? So. Exactly. We worked extremely hard to get it out early, uh, expecting a great crowd this year and expecting a great season. Uh, we want to get season tickets, and they're available already. we got great new ticket guys in the office, and the season ticket packages are ready. If you want to renew, you can renew now, 654-BLUE. If you want to put a deposit down on new tickets, give them a call as well, 654-BLUE. Tickets at csub.edu. Those guys will hook you up, get you all squared away, get your men's basketball tickets. You can get a combo package. You can watch men's and women's basketball this year. So we're in good shape. We want to get those tickets sold. That's why I want that schedule out. Exactly. So we got it out. Now we're expecting people to have come <laughs> out and, and buy tickets and looking forward to a great year. Great expectations among our staff and players this year, and we expect our fans to feel the same way about us. All right, Coach, appreciate it. We'll, uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Rod Barnes here on Roadrunner Rundown. Stick around. Carlin Pipes will join us, author of a new book called The Do-Over, motivational speaker, swimming instructor, international swimming hall of famer, and CSUB alum. We'll be back. This is Roadrunner Rundown. College soccer heats up with three games coming to the CESUB main soccer field. First, CESUB women's soccer hosts Sacramento State on September 4th and UC Riverside on Sunday, September 6th. Men's soccer returns to action for their official home opener on Friday, September 11th as the runners host Loyola Marymount at 7.30. Tickets are $9 for adults and $6 for kids. Join the runners this season at the main soccer field. Go runners! Thank you, Phil! Yeah! This is First Look with Scott Cox on News Talk 1180 and the new 96.1 KERN. This 
This is First Look with Scott Cox on News Talk 1180 and the new 96.1 KERN. Introducing a new way to get the news. The Bakersfield Californian E-Edition. It's not a website, it's the actual Bakersfield Californian right on your laptop, tablet computer, even your smartphone. All the news, features, pictures, and ads you're used to right at your fingertips. Now you can get the Californian on your schedule, anytime, anywhere, anyplace. Get your new Bakersfield Californian E-Edition today. Visit eedition.bakersfield.com. Introducing a new way to get the news. The Bakersfield Californian E-Edition. It's not a website, it's the actual Bakersfield Californian right on your tablet computer, laptop, even your smartphone. All the news, features, pictures, and ads you're used to right at your fingertips. Now you can get the Californian on your schedule, anytime, anywhere, anyplace. Get your new Bakersfield Californian E-Edition today. Visit eedition.bakersfield.com. Thursdays at 10 a.m. on Bakersfield.com, you'll find your favorite pair on the air. Don Clark and Tina Miller host Open Up, a show devoted to getting inside the real stories about real people. From community leaders to small businesses, Open Up is your forum to tell it like it is. It's Open Up with Don and Tina. Roadrunners basketball 2015-16 season tickets are on sale now. Don't miss your chance to see top-notch NCAA basketball right here on the Blue Court in Bakersfield. Men's basketball season tickets start as low as $112 for 16 games, or you can buy combination season tickets for every men's and women's home game this season. For all the new season ticket options for this season, visit GoRunners.com and find the ticket that's right for you. CSUV basketball season tickets available now. To order or for more information, call 654-BLUE. Welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown, final segment of the program. My thanks to Rod Barnes for joining us last segment and our athletic director, Ziggy Siegfried, in the uh, first segment of the program. And we're going to roll right along here as a great story. We kind of brought you over the summer on our website at GoRunners.com, and I thought, what a great story to uh, tell on uh, Roadrunner Rundown Season 3 premiere episode. I just want to welcome uh, to the show. She is a CSUB alum. She's the author of a new book, The Do-Over, which should be out shortly. She's a uh, motivational speaker, swimming instructor, and uh, now International Swimming Hall of Famer. I want to welcome to the show Carlin Pipes. Carlin, good to talk to you again. How you been? Aloha. I am doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, I, last time we talked and we, 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 we featured you on GoRunners.com, we were, we were getting ready to release a book. So uh, how's that coming along? Book's coming along fine. We're in the final stages, just uh, working on making sure that uh, we have an amazing cover for what's inside that represents, you know, what, what we're trying, the message of the do-over. And so it's getting close. Let's talk about that a little bit, because it's funny, when you and I chatted, the, ri- the reason why I called you originally over the summer, because you're going to the International Hall of Fame, and so I thought that was great. But you actually said, well, do you know my story? And I said, well, no, what is it? And you kind of let me know, and that's kind of the premise of the, uh, of the book, the do-over as well, Correct. That's correct, yeah. So, um, you know, I grew up as a very um, uh, elite level swimmer in my teens. had uh, Olympic potential written all over, um, you know, my performances. I had a coach that had gold medals in the Olympics. And basically throughout my 20s, I just couldn't live up to those expectations, and I just pretty much tossed it down the drain and uh, kind of resurrected myself after those lost years at age 31 um, re-entered the water, which was both a place where I had so much pleasure but also a lot of pain. And uh, the water healed me and uh, restored me back to um, my physical strength, my emotional, um, mental capabilities. And from that, I started competing again. And you competed at CSUB in your 30s. And how important was that opportunity you got to compete in the NCAA level once again and really sort of set you up for the framework of the rest of your career? Well, you know, it's such a, this is why the premise of the, the, the book is called The Do-Over. Um, so when I turned my life around at age 31, I thought pretty much I had no hope of going back to university or college at all. And we did some eligibility check, and I ended up going to Palomar College for two years. But then I became what's called a 424. I'd gone to a four-year university, now a two-year. 
so I was able to actually go back and utilize the one year of eligibility I had thanks to the Division Two rules. And um, and Pat Skehan at Bakersfield had been watching me when I was swimming at Palomar. She originally offered me, you know, come on up, take a look at us. And I said, no, I'm not going to go to Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> and then I kind of, we took another look, and then we did. And, and I tell you, out of all of the things that I've done in the do-over, going to, you know, CSUB was one of the very best experiences of my life. I mean, it's really made me who I am. Um, I love the school, the academics, the university team, Pat, and then being able to be a part of that uh, that year where we the men won and we were second it was our highest finish ever uh, was just life life changing just to to look and see what a collective effort could be done and it started with Pat taking a chance on an older athlete because at that time I was thirty five <laughs> and uh, no spring chicken when it comes to swimming but uh, she took a chance on me and it worked out great. And uh, you went on to have a successful business, and then you kept competing, though. And that sort of competition, the, the numerous world records, the Masters-level stuff, got you this opportunity to be in the International Swimming Hall of Fame. What did that mean like to be inducted over the summer, and especially after all you'd been through in your, in your career and your life? Well, it was, it was a pinnacle, absolutely. It's like I'm getting an offer and, you know, as far as uh, swimming goes. But one thing that I really enforced or uh, really suggested with the Hall of Fame was that they look at the entire body of work that I had done, and much of that was collegiate. And so I was really pleased that when they rolled the uh, videotape of my uh, past credentials and accomplishments, that a big portion of it was um, focused on Cal State Bakersfield. And, and Pat was in the audience there. Um, don't tell anybody, but she was crying. <laughs> <laughs> And it, it was just, it was amazing. It's just, I'm not just a master athlete. I was a collegiate athlete. I was a student athlete. And that was my main focus was to let people know that, you know, at age 35, you, you can go back and, and attempt to do some of the things that you might not have thought were possible. But you just got to try, you know, just, you know, one step at a time, one arm stroke at a time, one thought at a time. You can do it over. And if you don't like how it's done the first time, do it a second time. And if it doesn't work, do it a third time. So the do-overs are unlimited, and, and Cal State Bakersfield and being a roadrunner was was awesome. You know, just I just every time I say it, people just look at me and they go Bakersfield. I'm like, yeah, Bakersfield. It was awesome. <laughs> well, and, and really, the stories like yours are, are the reason why. I mean, we we do things like this program or do features on our website. We want people to see that and see really the impact that being a student athlete can have on someone's life in, in a positive manner. So we appreciate you uh, really, uh, you know, it, it, bragging about the fact that you went to CSUB. It's definitely great. Folks can check out um, your website's a AquaticEdge.org, and it goes through everything about your uh, your swimming stuff, some of your testimonials, and some of the information about your uh, upcoming, you know, your motivational speaking, which you're into now, and, of course, the book will be out soon. Uh, Carlin, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate your time, and uh, when the book is out, we're going we're gonna to promote the heck out of it, all right? That's awesome. Can I say one thing? Yes, you please. You know, I was a great swimmer at Cal State Bakersfield, but you know what? I was a better at student. Yeah. I was almost a 4.0 student, and it was wonderful because the education I received is going to last a heck of a lot longer than NCAA trophy. Yeah, and uh, the degree has definitely come in uh, handy for you as a uh, business person, hasn't it? Exactly. It's exactly what I needed to do to move me to the next level, and that's what I appreciate more than anything else is that education that I got. Beautiful. Well, great story. We appreciate you taking some time to share with us today, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have more as that, uh, as that book comes out here soon. Good luck to you. All right, thanks. I appreciate it. Take care. And uh, aloha. All right, Garlin Pipes here on uh, Roadrunner Rundown. Yeah, you know, Aquatic Edge is based in Hawaii. She was calling from Canada today, though. Uh, like I said, she travels the world doing her thing and uh, and teaching folks how to swim, telling her story. AquaticEdge.net is her website. Check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff. Uh, a lot of the videos we were showing uh, on the screen during the interview are out there as well. And, of course, uh, International Swimming Hall of Famer, too. So very cool uh, being inducted into a company such as Mark Spitz, Janet Evans, uh, Johnny Weissmuller, those kind of folks. Uh, uh, and there's a roadrunner right next to him in the International Swimming Hall of Fame, so that is very awesome. All right, next week on the program, we're going to have the Fall Sports Preview Edition of the show where we preview upcoming uh, the whole entire season for men's and women's soccer, volleyball as well. And you don't want to miss a very special extended-length version of a Corey versus where I made my attempt as a uh, as a soccer coach. I coach a lot of things in my life, mostly 
kids, but uh, I thought alumni athletes, men's soccer, how tough can it be? So we're going to have that on the program next week. Make sure you check it out. You can get this show anytime online at GoRunners.com. We are back on the web. Check us out uh, top right corner at GoRunners.com. As a matter of fact, as well, you can uh, catch the show there or GoRunners.com slash rundown. Check out all the uh, season archive editions of this program. And of course, uh, schedules and information and all that good stuff about this uh program online at GoRunners.com. Follow us on social media. We're all over the place at Facebook.com slash CESUB Roadrunners. On Twitter and Instagram at CESUB Athletics. And we're on Snapchat now at CESUB Athletics as well for you youngsters out there that love the Snapchat. You can check us out, follow our stories, and see what we're doing all the time, including behind-the-scenes looks of Roadrunner Rundown on Snapchat. Follow us at CESUB Athletics. My thanks to Ziggy Siegfried for joining us, our athletics director, head coach Ron Barnes of men's basketball as we unveiled the 2015 schedule and from uh, Carlin Pipes, a great alumni story, and we'll be following her and her book, The Do-Over, which is due out very, very shortly. Thanks so much for joining us again. Next week, we've got the Fall Sports Preview Edition of Roadrunner Rundown back in studio the following week, and we're going to be on campus on September the 15th as well for our Week of Welcome show. A lot of great stuff to come here on season number three of Roadrunner Rundown. I'm Corey Costello. Have a great week. We'll catch you next time. This has been Roadrunner Rundown. <laughs>